I was pretty active, running, working out, all the normal stuff, and then I suddenly started feeling a little fatigue. He crossfitted, he, you know, marathons, obstacle course racing. He was very committed. It was a lifestyle. It wasn't just a casual thing. It was a lifestyle. And so when he started to slow down, it became apparent very quickly. I developed a tooth infection and I had the wisdom tooth removed. The infection started getting worse. Uh, the roof of my mouth started swelling. And then after a week or two, I started getting the fevers and night sweats. That's when I went back to the oral surgeon and he recommended I get a blood test. He came downstairs with his phone and he handed it to me and he said, listen to this. And on the other end was the emergency room doctor and he said, you need to get to the hospital right away. Do not stop any place. Don't take any time. Get here immediately. Once I got there, they sit you down and they tell you, hey, you have leukemia. We need to do a biopsy to find out what type it is. They found out that it's AML, which is a pretty aggressive type. That needed treatment right away. So they put the PICC line in. I start the induction chemo phase uh, 10 days, which put me into remission. We recommend uh, people um, with leukemia in first remission um, to, to, be, to be considered for a bone marrow transplant. And that's when we start talking, we start talking about um, looking for a donor. And fortunately for him, um, his sister was found to be a perfect match for him. The critical part I was in now is the first 100 days after transplant. They want to make sure that my body doesn't reject my sister's cells. Before all this, I was pretty active and being in isolation for almost two months, um, kind of, you, you start wondering if you'll ever do that stuff again. So it took a little while, it took a little coaxing uh, from DE, Dr. Farrell, but eventually I started exercising again, walk, started with walking. You know, slowly but surely, I made a few visit, visits to my uh, CrossFit 858. That's where I started uh, with the help of my coach there and those members. You know, they started helping me, you know, get back to where I was. Bernard is a living testament to the proof of positive thinking, uh, having a good community behind them, and fighting like hell, fighting for your life, literally, and that it can be done. End of my 100 days was uh, towards the end of January and I continued exercising and I was able to run my first 5K event, uh, I believe in March. And then it started from there. I went from diagnosis to treatment in two months. And there are people that have been waiting, I don't know, years maybe for a donor. Fortunately for patients who have European descent, the, the European registry is very vast and so it's easier for, for us to find a donor for those uh, patients. But if you're dealing with minorities, Asians, African American, Hispanics, um, it's very hard to, to find a donor. Um, not that there isn't one out there, it's just they're not registered in, in our uh, registry and we can't tap into that information. We just put on events, we put on marrow drives uh, for my one year anniversary. We did a, uh, a YOLT, a You Only Live Twice 5K, down here in San Diego at Cancer Survivors Park. Dr. Farrell came down and ran it with me. What's amazing about Bernard is he used his um, struggles and, and what, he's, what he's experienced and he made it something very positive. Now to see him, you know, coming back and to do the first half marathon with him and get him all the way through to the finish line. It was just a celebration. It was the most amazing feeling to see him cross that line and, and you know, for his fit, you know, friends and family to be there with him and celebrating. And it was, uh, it's been pretty good. <laughs> it's, you know, it's been very high to very low to back to very high again. And, and um, I feel like we've really been blessed with a second chance.